In this course, you will learn how to read input and write output using Python. You will go over this in a couple of lessons, starting with the first one, where you learn how to read input from the keyboard using the input function, then how to convert the input that you get from the input function also so that you can do numerical computations with it. Then you will learn how to write the output back to the console using the print function, and also how you can customize the output to your console with some keyword arguments that you can use with print. And finally, there will be a conclusion lesson where you go once again over all the functions that you used in this course. Now let's get started with reading some input from the keyboard. In this first lesson, you will learn how to read input from the keyboard. And you will do that using the input function. So this input function allows you to enter something with the keyboard and then use it inside of your Python script. So let's head back over to a Python script. I have here an empty script. There is nothing in here so far, but I'm going to make a comment for myself. I'm just going to say, I want to collect user input. And in Python, you can do this using the input function. So it works just like this, that you type the word input and then open close the brackets. This indicates a function call. And that's enough. So this instructs Python to stop execution, pause it, collect the input from the user and continue only after the user pressed enter. Let's give this a spin. So I'm opening up a terminal and now I'm going to run this script. I'm going to say python script.py, press enter, and you see that Python stops execution here. It doesn't jump back into my terminal because you're still inside of the Python program right now and you're sitting inside of input that opened up a portal for you to type some text. So now I can say hello and once I press enter, only then the script continues, and because there's nothing else going in here, it exits and goes back to my bash console. Now, this instruction isn't very descriptive. So something you can do in here is you can add a string that describes what you want the user to input here. So for example, I can say, what's your name? And then if you run this again, then you will see that the prompt displays here inside of your console, and it makes more sense. As a user, I know what I'm supposed to do, so I can type in here my name. I'm going to say Martin, press Enter, Python continues, and because nothing else goes on in this small script, it exits and goes back to the Bash console. Now, there's not much happening with this, but the input function returns whatever the user inputs here. So in this case, that would be the string Martin. So you can catch the input by assigning it to a variable can say name equals input. And then when I run this script again and input my name, it's going to be stored inside of the script under the name variable. Unless you do something with that name variable, not much is going to happen. But like this, you can save it and then reuse it in your script. If I run this again, you won't see a difference because currently I'm not doing anything with the name variable. But now, for the moment that the script exists before it exits again, my name, Martin, here exists as a string in the name variable. And that's all for collecting input. So you really just need to put the input function. You can optionally pass it a prompt. And then Python is going to pause execution, collect whatever you type in there until you press enter. And optionally, you can save it to a variable name, which makes a lot of sense if you want to do something with the user input. Now, in the next lesson, you will see something that you can do with an input like that and also a potential trouble that you can run into and how to solve it. In this lesson, you will learn how to convert the keyboard input that you get using the input function into an integer so that you can make some numerical calculations with it. So when I head back over to this small script from before where you were collecting the name of a user, now, let's instead of connecting the name, let's collect the H and then do a small calculation with it. And actually, let's take a look first in the Python interpreter what you might be expecting to happen. So you want something like this that you ask the user to input their H, let's say they're 35 years old, and you collect this input and then you want to make some calculation. For example, you want to tell them how old they're going to be in 50 years. And then that would be 85, right? So this is kind of what you want to mimic in your script. And so you're collecting the age from the user. And let's adapt the prompt to reflect that. So I'm going to say, give me what's your age. 
and then afterwards you want to say h plus 50. You see there's some squiggly red line here. This is because the Visual Studio Code editor already tells you that there's going to be a problem happening with that. And you can inspect that as well, but let's just run it anyways, just so that you see what error comes up. So if I say python script.py, press enter, Python again opens up the space for me to, to give some user input here. I'm going to say 35, press enter, and then you get this type error where Python tells you it can't concatenate a string and an integer object together. So you know that this is an integer object, and this error already gives you an indication of what's happening with the input function, which is that it always returns a string. So you can see it also here in the type annotations. If you use the input function, it will always return a string. So if you want to do some sort of calculation with it afterwards, you need to first convert it to the type that you need. You can do that by wrapping it inside of the integer conversion function here. So I can say, collect that input. It's going to be a string 35. And then the int function that you're wrapping around this input is going to convert it to an integer and then assign that integer to the age variable. And then afterwards, this calculation is going to work fine. So now if I run the same script again, give the same input, then you see there is no error and the script finishes just like it should. So to remember here is that if you collect input using the input function, then it's always going to be a string. And if you want to do some numerical calculations, for example, you first need to convert that input to whatever type you need. And in the next lesson, you're going to make this script a bit more useful because currently you're only doing that calculation, but you're not actually displaying anything back to the user. And so you will learn how to use the print function to display some output back here to the console.